Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm going to present my work as uh, I've been already introduced. Uh, I'm doing my PhD thesis in the Universidad Carlos III, but I'm currently working in Arquimea. So in Arquimea, uh, we are located in the Canary Islands, and we are a center that is focused on accelerating quantum technologies or any other kind of technologies in artificial intelligence, uh, biosensing, um, also marine technologies. And we have been recently uh, uh, granted a teaming project. That is the first time that is granted in, in Spain. The teaming project is to um, accelerate quantum technologies. So actually, there's a kickoff today also there in Tenerife with other partners from the European Union who are going to uh, help us to develop new quantum technologies and uh, find a market and some pr application for them. Okay, so part of this work, uh, from this project, we, uh, we have been developing a work about photon counting statistics in nitrogen packing centers. So first, I'm going to introduce what are photon counting statistics in the context of, MB of MB centers that have been already introduced by Jorge. I'm going to talk a bit uh, the, the part that is more of interest. And then I'm going to find and discuss some applications that we have been working on uh, about these um, photon statistics. First of all, about readout analysis. Readout uh, means how to distinguish between the zero and the one state that we were discussing in the previous talk. Then I'm going to talk about photon autocorrelations, uh, how the photons are going to be emitted from this uh, sensor, and how can we use this for some measurement characterizations. Okay? And then I'm going to present some conclusions. Okay, so what are photon statistics? Okay, first of all, the nitrogen vacancy. Okay, we here we have another scan of how we find them. Okay, so we have single defects in the in a diamond. When we excite them with a the laser, they emit uh, red fluorescence, and we can detect them. So once we identify one, uh, what this happens? Okay, this is the idea of the on the lattice. Uh, we can control it. Okay, the main idea is that the we can initialize it, as we say, when we excite it with the green laser. It can go from a, through a spin conserving transition and go back to the zero state. So if we excite it, uh, the system will go to the zero state. And also, we can read out okay, the system. The zero state is brighter. Okay? Through this transition as well, as well it's going uh, to emit more photons. And another important part is that we can control it. We can apply microwave to the ground uh, state, the excited ground state. And we can change the zero and one state, we can control the position and read out the system state. Okay, this is the basic ideas. Uh, if you have more questions later about the levels, we can discuss, but it has been already introduced, so I don't want to get into details too much into this. Okay, so what we usually do, do with this, okay, is we solve the rate equations of this system, we have the transition rate, the intensities, and we can know the probability of being in each of one of these states. Okay, so this is how traditionally is done. Okay, but sometimes we are interested in not the state of the system, but the photons that are going to be emitted. Okay, usually what we get from these rate equations is the des density state of the system. Okay, so imagine these are the ground state and the excited state. Okay, so this state and this one. Okay, so y we initialize the system in the zero state. Okay, in the ground state, and we apply a laser. Imagine we are co constantly here in through these cases uh, applying a laser. So what happens is that the system will jump to the excited state, and then will decay. And this will happen all the time, okay? The system will co be constantly uh, being excited and then uh, decaying. Each time this happens, uh, uh, the system is going to be emitting a photon. Okay, so what can we do is consider the whole system as a single, st as a quantum state, okay? So instead of having the um, density matrix for these two states, we have a density matrix for the infinite set of states for the emitted photons. Okay, this is the idea. So we can be in the zero state emitting in the ground state emitting zero photons, one photons, two photons, and so on. So we want to keep track of this number of photons that are being emitted. Okay? Uh, once we solve for this equation, that at the end is going to be an infinite set of coupled equations that we can solve numerically or with analytical methods, we have the photon number statistics, this Pn of t. That is the probability of emitting n photons at a given time. Okay? This is more or less so clear. Okay. So this is the image that we can, or, or how we think about these probabilities. First, as a function of time, for we excite the system in the ground state, and at uh, as a function of time, it will emit uh, one photon, two photons, three photons. Okay, we have a probability of emitting a number of photons as a function of time. From these statistics, we can compute the average number of photons, the its distribution, 
every property from this mm, from the stream of photons, we can analyze it from these probabilities. Okay, the intensity, the average intensity, and we can uh, try to infer some properties from the MB from this emission of photons. And also another way of thinking about them is a instead of as a function of time, as a function of n. Okay, we fix the time. Okay, we uh, imagine we have evolved the system for, a, for after a pulse for a one micro microsecond, and we can see that the system will have a probability of emitting a number of photons for for that time. Okay, so we have this uh, probability. Something that is usually useful is compared to the Poissonian distribution. Okay, sometimes. Uh, people assume that quantum system will emit photons in a Poissonian way. That is more or less true in some situations. So how far are we from this uh, Poissonian approximation or uh, intuition? So usually it's something that we compare, okay? Okay, so one thing we do is use these statistics for readout analysis. Okay, the goal at the end is distinguish between the zero and the one state. How well are, gonna, uh, are we going to be able to uh, do a protocol and distinguish between these two states? So what happens is that the, this probability of emission will depend on the initial state of the system. Okay, if we were in the zero state or in the one state, we will have different probability emissions, and how they overlap gives us a lot of information. Okay, so at the end, for example, in the experiment, we will receive 20 photons. Okay, but how do we assign this number of photons to a given state? Because we have a probability of being in the one state, or a high probability in the zero. But it can happen that we receive 20 and we were in the one, or that we receive 20 and we were initially in zero. Uh, so there's uh, this log likelihood ratio that gives us intuition of how well are we going to uh, be able, depending on the intensity, of do this assignment, okay? So if we do a single repetition, we have this kind of error associated with the knowledge we are gained to the system, okay? If ideally, we would, have, we would like to have these two distributions completely separate, okay? So for example, um, 20 photons for the zero state and 10 photons for the one state. So we will have only have two options and we can distinguish perfectly. But this doesn't happen. Okay. So the idea is, okay, at, as Jorge said, the more we measure, the more times we measure, the better we are going to be able to distinguish and separate these two states. How, how this is scales with the, with the system probabilities uh, is called, the, is assigned through the churn of information. Okay. So this distribution, this distribution, Okay, this quantity, the term of information, have information about the, these two probabilities, okay? The probability of being in zero and the probability of being in one, okay? And it gives us information about how these two uh, distributions are overlapping, okay? So, and what can we can see as a function of time and as a function of the laser intensity, okay? Depending on how strongly we are irradiating the system and how, time, how long are we interrogating it, okay? This is like the most experimental part. It's associated on how we are reading the state of the MB. We have different uh, information uh, capabilities, okay? So as we can see, for example, for a given intensity, we have a maximum, okay? If we, and this is something that we can see more or less experimentally. If we measure for more time, at the end, the, as the system is evolving and is being initialized the, the zero, the two uh, distributions are overlapping and we are not going to be able to distinguish the system so well. So there's an optimal time in which we are going to be able to distinguish better the um, the, 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 these two states, and this maximum time depends on the laser intensity. So this kind of analysis allows us to have better insight into the uh, experimental, probability, uh, experimental parameters of the readout. Okay, as an example, just for insight, we have a Rabi experiment. Okay, we initialize the system in the zero state. Uh, we apply a microwave uh, to, con to sweep the probabilities of the zero and the one state. Okay, so when we are in the zero, we are brighter, and then when we are in the one, the is darker. Okay, so if we are uh, working in different Chernoff regimes, so here in the mm, in the maximum, in the red, and in the black, in the minim in a minimum or in a lower point, we can see that the amplitude of the radio oscillation changes, and we don't distinguish the state so so well. Okay, so this, this is the idea for the readout analysis. Okay, then we did some photonic correlation experiments. So say we went to Berlin to a to an, uh, se a set up in. In, the, in a group in HIB, Home Home Center, and we did some experiments to corroborate that this model was good and that we were able to um, gain some insight and some characterization of the, of the system, okay? So we did photon anti-banching, okay? The, this is the same idea, like the photons are being emitted for the, from the MB, and how are the statistics, okay? How well are these photons separated from each other? Okay, it can happen, depending on the intensity of the laser or the initial state, that they appear well, separately, this will be nice for a single photon source, or that we, they are bunched. They appear mm, like very sudden, okay? Like we have bursts of MBs. This also can happen if there's two MBs together or other kind of physical uh, situations, okay? 
But what we did is we did some auto correlation measurements. Okay, this quantity measures this kind of uh, spacing between the, the the photons, and that can be measured in the experiment. And we measure it for different power excitations. Okay, and we compare with the model, and we see that we can retrieve this information, and we can predict uh, in which regimes this the behavior of the experimental uh, parameters would give give result to different results. Okay, and finally uh, we use this for measurement characterization as well. So we did ODMR, that is the technique that is used for uh, detecting the magnetic fields. The most common technique used for uh, the, the, the using that as a spin sensor. So what happens is that when the MB is in resonance, okay, this transition, this rapid frequency is in resonance with the with the energy of the transition. We see a drop in the fluorescence, okay. So the here we are in the in the zero state, and when the energy of the microwave is in resonance, we drop to the one state and we lose the the brightness. Okay. What is important is that the contrast of this uh, of this duration of this uh, resonance gives us the sensitive limits of the system. And what can what can we do is investigate the interplay of the of the microwave power and the laser power. If we are exciting too fast the system, okay, we plot here the contrast as a function of the power intensity of the laser. Okay. And what can we see is that if we increase the power too much the the contrast will decay okay this kind of analysis can do be done with not photon statistic with other system but the photon statistic will uh, give more information about how these uh, parameters relate with what can be measured in the experiment so also it's a technique and a uh, way of validating the model and that is useful for this kind of characterizations okay and okay so uh, just to finish uh, this Photon statistics is used to characterize the MB center, but it can be extended to other color centers or the defects or other quantum systems in general. The technique is general um, and is uh, can be used to optimize measurements and other systems and uh, can get more insight into the dynamics of the MB and how to exploit them. And just to finish, uh, I have to stress that we have a, a paper about this uh, uh, this work published today in the archive. So if you want to have a look, you're welcome. And and just to acknowledge all the people who have worked, uh, Jorge, Hilario, the people from uh, El País Vasco and Madrid, and also from Berlin, so which have helped a lot. And uh, it's been a nice way of working and collaborative work. So thank you very much. Okay, it will mm, depend a lot on the intensity of the laser, so you can have like a uh, order of magnitude to changes in the, if you can have like, usually in experiment, taking account that these are not the photons that are emitted, but the photons that you are collecting, it will be like 100,000 counts per second, That's it. so it can be around that. You can incl uh, include the ensembles in this kind of modeling, but you will have like a lot more photons. Like also in assemblies, you have order of magnitude, so uh, more than this, so also this. Okay. 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 Thank you.